Hey everyone. So today we're going to build a Langchain based application with a completely no code framework. And for that, we're going to use bubble based front end and a flow wise based back end. So we will build a PDF search application where we are going to utilize OpenAI embeddings as well as OpenAI completion API and we'll use Pinecone vector database, which is another provider in this space for vector databases and Flowwise, of course, for building our backend. So just to remind from our previous video, any document ingestion system has these two arms. And the first part is taking document and then extracting text out of that and creating these chunks, which are then embedded and stored in the Pinecone vector database. Um, basically, it's taking these texts and then converting it to numbers or vectors, which are stored into the Pinecone vector database. And on the other hand, we have the search query. When a user searches anything from the document, it's going to be converted into embeddings as well, and then looked for a similarity in our vector database. And once we find any relevant answers, we send it over for completion to OpenAI asking to formulate an answer from these relevant results. So as mentioned, it's easier to kind of decouple these two systems and imagine as two different systems that we need to build. And what you see over here is those two separate decoupled systems where one, we're going to use document ingestion portion, and we will use Flowwise for this. And for the querying of the data, we will utilize bubble based front end to send the question over. And then the Flowwise takes care of rest of this diagram here. So to get started, first thing is we need to fork this repo of Flowwise. And basically, you're going to see something along these lines. You can keep all of this info as is and create the fork. And once you do that, it will be in your account. And now we're going to go to render.com and create a new web service. Once you click that, you will have these options. You can select Flowwise and hit connect. You'll probably see something along these lines. So I'm going to call this Flowwise doc QA select the region which is closest to you and your users and then runtime we're gonna select node in this case and the settings here are something that flowwise have provided to us so if you were to go down in the setup section you'll see that the dependencies could be installed using yarn install build and then the app can be started using yarn start so that's exactly what we will set here in the build commands where we will have this particular command for building our image and then this command over here for starting the application. So please use these for your setting as well. The only additional thing which is key for Flowwise is the free instance might not be the best to run the application because the free instance goes to sleep after 15 minutes of inactivity. And that's something that will not save your flows. So I highly suggest for you to start with a starter or any other plans, a paid plan, which keeps your flows active and saved so you can use them to call the API. So once you do that, you'll see that your logs are probably going to be something similar where it says it's going to install application as well as run the scripts provided and it will give you a link to the application. Once you click the link, you will have something along these lines where the UI of the Flowwise is available to you. So there is marketplace where you can look at examples. We're going to build something completely ground up. So we will start with a new flow and going back to our, our diagram over here, we need to take document and then create these chunks and save into the Pinecone vector database. So to do that, if you were to look into PDF loader, so this is the option we're going to select. It says, okay, we need a text splitter as well as an output over here. So the input and output to this block. So for the text splitters, we can select text splitter over here, which is recursive character text splitter, drag and drop. So it's quite easy and nice. Just drag and drop and select uh, which one would you like. And then for 
the chunk overlap this can help keep the context relevant between each chunks so feel free to add any sort of chunk overlap to your document and then next thing is we need to send it to the pinecone vector database so for that i'm going to select the vector store option and upsert document once you do that you notice that it takes the documents as well as it takes embeddings and this is where we're going to supply the embeddings from openai so we'll search for openai embeddings then use that in our flow and the last thing is once we can upsert the document and the embeddings we need to ask questions to the document and that's where we're going to utilize the retrieval block okay so this takes two options one is the vector store retriever that we can supply over here and an llm option for that we're going to use openai as mentioned before so we will use the llm option of openai and this completes the flow for our use case and then the next step is for us to fill in all these api keys so from openai as well as from pinecone and then pinecone environment as well as the index so openai api keys could be found in your openai account the part that i would like to mention about is pinecone so if you create an account on pinecone um, and then create an index so this is where you can give an index name and the other option is dimensions so i have set the index name as docs qa and the dimensions are 1536 so you might want to remember that as 1536 over here this is the particular embedding model that we will use from openai which takes 1536 as dimensions now once you do that you are going to need the api keys from pinecone as well as the environment from Pinecone and the other key information is the index name. So now I've filled out the API keys and the other information. So pretty much our backend is set up. So just to test it out, I'm going to upload a file, Constitution of the United States, and hit save. It's going to ask me to give it some name, docqna. So something I had missed earlier is the updated version of Flowwise has a namespace option as well. And what this does is it saves your embeddings in Pinecone as a separate partition. So you can basically name it as you like, as the PDF document, constitution, or you could name it anything essentially. So next time, if you upload a different document, then you can either save it in the same namespace or you can save it in a separate namespace. And once you do that, when you perform a search on that namespace, it will only look for documents that you saved in, in that particular partition. It comes in handy if you are planning to upload multiple documents and you wanna separate them, or if you wanna have a separate accounts for different users so you want to have these namespaces for each user so when they perform a search it only looks for that particular uh, namespace based on that user so with that you have an option to test the working of the app so i'm just going to ask what is this document about so what's going to happen is it has already done the part of embeddings as well as upserting that to Pinecone. And now it's generating answers based on our workflow. So this is a good sign that it's working fine. Now the key part that we are going to use from this backend is the API endpoint. So if you look at the, the link provided here, this is specific to my application. So I'm going to use this in our bubble front end. So one additional thing that you might want to remember is that this link that is provided by render is specific to your application. But also if someone were to visit this link, they will have access to the same flows that you have as well as the work that you have done. So you might want to keep that to you and also make that a little hard to guess for sure. So if you were to go back to your Pinecone vector database, you will notice that there will be 
some vectors stored in that index which basically hints towards the successful running of the flowwise UI. So now we're going to go to bubble and create a new app. I have built something very simple in this case. So we just have a text box where users can ask question. And then once they hit search, we will have some text that displays over here. So the logic behind this search starts with a loader again this is something for aesthetic purposes and then an api call this is where we will call the flowwise backend and then once we have the response i am setting state for this particular group here and the way you can set state is by clicking this i and then you have custom states and i gave it some name and set it as a text variable so within the workflow the main aspect is the call to the backend which can be set using api connector and the way you can get api connector is by adding a plugin so once the api connector is available we will configure it with any name that you like and the key here is going to be the api call and the setting with that so i had to play a little bit to get the right setting uh, i figured that the data type needs to be as text header has to be as shown here content type application json and then the url that was mentioned earlier for flowwise api call and this will be a post call and the way json is going to look is something along this line so question in quotes is important and to initialize the call you can give any question so once everything is set as mentioned and once you have the url from Flowwise application, which is over here. I'm going to take this and then paste it there. And let's reinitialize the call just with the test question again. What is this document about? This should hit the API and it provides the result over here. Nice. So if now we were to preview the application and search for the same question, we should get the same response. Now it's going to hit the API and provide a response. Very nice. Let's test it with something else. What does article one say? Now it should again do the same. Hit the back end and get some response to us. So basically, this is a, a working prototype of uploading a document to Flowwise and saving the embeddings to pinecone and then generating an api that you can call from bubble front end with that thank you again for watching the video if you have any questions comments feel free to reach out on twitter or over here on youtube and looking forward to making even more content available thank you